So hello zany friends, you're going to see a little bit of different setup today, but mm -hmm. you are watching Ride or Abide. Ride or Abide, NPR edition. Yeah, you're not going to see our faces. Not at all, but basically it's because I have a cold and I don't really have a lot of energy to be on camera today, but we wanted to bring you what we've been watching and reading and doing this week, as well as some holidays that we are going to be celebrating in the upcoming week, because in this season, if we don't take time to stop and celebrate the little holidays, the time will get away from us. You always got to take a moment to stop and sniff the mistletoe. That is so true. Mm -hmm. That is true. So, because it is the end of November, we do have to tell you what we've been reading this week, as well as doing our November book wrap-up. So, it's time for books, books, books. This week, I kind of wasn't so awesome with going through books. I was doing two audiobooks, but I only got halfway through both of them. But you did start Ready Player Two, so that's important. Yeah. I'm halfway through Raybearer and Ready Player Two. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. And how are you liking Ready Player Two? As mine is coming in the mail, because I decided to read a physical copy rather than doing an audiobook. I'm a little conflicted about it, but it's starting to become the fun that I was expecting again. Uh, it started from a place where I was just very disappointed. Um, not just with the main character, but just like the state of things. Hmm. But you kind of have to be in order for there to be a story. I've really enjoyed Raybearer as well. It's a great take on African-centered fantasy. Uh, we're very used to Caucasian-centered fantasy ideals. And this one is very Afrocentric. And I just love the feel of it. It is the story of a girl who is, they call half demon, I'm not entirely certain if that phrase works, who is being sent to kill the prince by getting on his council. What that all means, you'll have to read the book for yourself. But it's a very interesting book, and so far I'm giving it four stars. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So just some books. I have actually read about four books this week. I am really happy too because I have been trying to up my book reading game so that I can make it to 200 books by the end of the year and I'm doing well. My original goal was 104 so I have surpassed that. So we have first The Cul-de-Sac War by Melissa Ferguson. It is a book about a girl who she's in this like community theater group but she gets paid for it it's like her job mm -hmm. and this guy moves in next door and he's trying to renovate the home that he has just purchased and things at the beginning of the book happened so that she feels like this guy is not the prince charming mm -hmm. that she basically thought he was and that really only happened like in the first five minutes so from then on she realizes she hates him but <laughs> the but then of course she doesn't and uh and the whole book is really about like her trying to get a job because this theater might be closing because he's going to be doing reservations for the theater but it's called the cul-de-sac war because they are living in a cul-de-sac together it was a fun book but it wasn't necessarily like a really complicated read or anything and even as i'm describing it i'm kind of like oh there's not a lot going on in this book oh, <laughs> but okay. i really appreciate the theater references and as a theater major myself i felt like it was quite interesting when they would throw out these you know references to this like theater stuff and I'd be like I actually know what that is that's amazing so I liked that I only gave it three stars though okay. so yeah uh, the next book I read was actually a book of the month that I got for this month and it's called this time next year and it's by Sophie Cousins it's like when Harry Met Sally meets Sleep is in Seattle kind of because of how it's put together it is told between the present and flashbacks in the past where the two main characters, I believe Minnie and Quinn, are born in the same hospital in 1990 around midnight and there's a competition in their area for whoever gets born right after midnight, the first baby born of 1990, they get like $50,000 for their family. But the two mothers have been put together in the same room and one of the moms reveals to the other one that she really likes the name Quinn. 
The other mom basically steals the name Quinn for her son. So from the get-go, these two people have this kind of fraught history, but apparently they have been seeing each other in different places their entire life, but they don't realize it until one New Year's Eve, which of course it's their birthday, where the girl gets stuck in a bathroom and the guy finds her. And then it is told from then on about how she's kind of mad at him because her name is now Minnie Cooper instead of Quinn Cooper. (laughs) So she's angry. (laughs) But it kind of goes from there. I mean, it was a funny book and I really like enjoyed it. But I gave it three stars because at some point I felt like it was just overly descriptive and that wasn't necessary. But the book by itself was fun. Okay. Let's take a water break. Everybody take a moment to drink your drink. That's some good water there. So the third book I read this week was called A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and it's by Bridget Kemmerer. And it is the first in a series of three books. The third book is coming out next year, and I got approved to read it through NetGalley. And I had really wanted to read the first two anyway, uh, so this was a very good excuse for me to read it. It is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but not in the way you think, because she is modern. She comes from our time period, whereas the quote-unquote beast does not. Um, So she kind of, they they explain it as like a parallel world that she and uh, the prince's bodyguard can jump between. Um, That's how he gets her. So basically, the other way that this is a little bit different is that in the curse, the beast gets around three months but not always and in that time period he looks like a prince and he has the that time to get the girls to fall in love with him or he becomes a monster or a creature he's a different kind of monster every time but he does black out every time and unfortunately he kills almost everybody he killed his entire family as the monster he kills townspeople and whatever so he has tried to kill himself because he can't really take it but when his guardsman goes to select a girl Uh, Our main character sees him and tries to knock him out because obviously he's kidnapping a girl. Yeah. And instead, she gets taken. What's also really cool is she's got cerebral palsy. So everyone thinks she's injured all the time and she's like, no, I just have cerebral palsy. Shut up and teach me how to ride a horse again. (laughs) You know, that kind of thing. Okay. She's very independent and strong and that's what I really love about that character. And the way the story is told is just so different and so beautiful and i loved it completely i gave it five stars and i am reading the second book which is like oh a heart so fierce and broken is the second one i'm reading that during the month of december because i loved it so much i believe that if you listen to this on audiobook marshall you would love it that sounds like a really fun concept I know I really enjoyed A Court of Thorns and Roses, and that's kind of a It's Beauty very and the Beast. like that. It yeah. definitely is, yes. Yeah, so I might be interested in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the fourth book I just finished reading last night is called Admission. It is by Julie Buxbaum, and it is the story ripped from the headlines of someone whose mother gets arrested because of the college admission scandal. So Ooh. I was reading, yeah, I was reading the foreword actually by the author who said that the whole, she was in the middle of writing this whole other book when this situation went down and it fascinated her so much that she felt like she had to write a book about it. Mm. So it is the story of, uh, you know, a girl who didn't know that her mom was helping her cheat to get into college. So her mom gets arrested and she doesn't know what's going to happen to her because everyone, uh, you know, she's talking to a bunch of the kids from uh, the same fate as her, all parents who got arrested for the same thing. They're all talking together saying, uh, you know, are are we going to be implicated and tried and, you know, all of that jazz. So, uh, yeah, this book is also told in the past and the present. um, But I have to say that I don't really think the past story that they tried to tell really lent itself that much in the way they told it. I felt like all of the information that they gave in the past chapters could have been told in the present chapters in reference, and it would have been 
perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. So I felt like that part of the book kind of was lacking for me, unfortunately, but the story itself was really, I feel like I just lived the story you know, yeah. <laughs> since it just happened. Um, I did give it three stars okay. for that. Primarily because of the, the whole past angle. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. This, like I said, the story itself was very fascinating, and I thought that the, the author did a lot of really good work to paint a sympathetic main character as someone who had absolutely no idea what was happening, (laughs) you know, at all. But everybody in her life, like all her friends, were like, oh, you know, you're you're a horrible person because this happened. But she had no control over it. Yeah. And honestly, who's the real criminal here? The students whose parents are having to forge their way in or the schools who are making education something that you have to fake your way in. You know, that's something I thought of too when this whole thing was going down is, yes, there is the guy who is you know, facilitating this whole process and the parents who paid for it. But what about the school who accepted his proposition? Yeah. You know, like, where's the responsibility there? Yeah, I, I'm feeling like more and more you, you look at these colleges and they're starting to become more of a, it doesn't give you very much for your money. I think now we should do our November wrap up of mm-hmm. everything we read, how many books, etc. Yeah. In the month of November. And, you know, putting all this together, I feel like I'm nowhere near as accomplished as last month. But at the same well, time... There was stuff going on in There's November. a whole lot of stuff going on in November, people. Okay, okay. Don't judge me. How, how did you do? Well, in the month of November, I read 15 books, which I believe is like my fourth highest for the year. So I was excited about that. Anyway, I read 10 ebooks, three physical books, and two audiobooks. Uh, total number of pages was 5,524. So I got a total of 18 books. However, 14 of those were volumes of the same comic. And then I did two ebooks and two audiobooks, although I am halfway through two more. This has totaled, other than those two that I'm halfway through, 4,487 pages. We're pretty close. We are pretty close. Yeah. As far as stars, I had two five-star reads, three four-star reads, nine three-star reads. I had a lot that were middle of the road there. Mm -hmm. I had one two-star read and five DNFs. I did not finish five. I I had a really hard time this month, I think, because a lot of times I would start reading something and I just get disinterested. And Mm -hmm. for me, that's horrible because I want to finish the book, but... If, if, if I feel like I just can't make myself do it, then I, I try not to force it too yeah. much. Um, but as you can tell, I had really a lot of, you know, three-star reads, which means the books I was reading weren't holding my attention that much anyway. I mean, I only had two five-stars. I also have learned quite a bit about, uh, like, my reading style, but I'm going to go into that later in our lifestyle section um, because I do have some notes about that. Okay, so what about you? Uh, I have three four-star books and two five-star books. The five stars were Anxious People and The House in the Cerulean Sea, which we have talked about at length in previous videos. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you haven't picked those up yet, give yourself an early Christmas present, holiday present. True that. um, Late Diwali present. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. <laughs> if you are interested in reviews about any of these books, you can check our earlier videos because we have done reviews on all of those. But for me, I gave uh, The Inheritance Games and A Curse So Dark and Lonely my five star reviews. Marshall needs to listen to both of them on audiobook mm-hmm. when he gets the chance because they're amazing. Both mm-hmm. of them. Both of them are great. And both of them are starts to new series. So that makes me excited. Yeah. Time for movies. So this week in movies, it was kind of weird because we definitely watched some holiday movies, but at the same time, I got tired of watching Hallmark movies and just stopped. And I apologize for those of you who are wanting to know about more Hallmark movies because I think I just got really tired of watching the commercials and that happens. Yeah. It does. Uh, So you're going to see a really weird combination of movies here on on our list here. So the first one that we saw, and it actually was a rewatch for both Marshall and I, um, but it was a new kind of movie for my husband, Corey, because he fell asleep when we watched it the first time, which is what happens. So it's Bill and Ted Face the Music. This actually, uh, he said, was his favorite. He liked it more than the first one. I don't. I still love the first one a lot, uh, but this one is a very close second. I would say that it does capture a lot of the fun of the first movie, 
but it does have a lot of elements of bogus journey in it that kind of bring the mood a little down um but that's still it's now available to rent we got it from Redbox, mm-hmm. so you can watch it there uh the second movie which was new to the two of us but not to my husband because he saw it in the theater was the new mutants we also rented that one and i surprisingly liked it better than i had heard reviews about people did yeah. not like this movie and i actually kind of liked it i i went in with no preconceived notions about what this movie was i thought it was going to be a super scary thriller movie yeah. and it turned out to not be we, we all kind of agreed at the end that this is kind of like the breakfast club with mutant powers true totally and i yeah. also felt like i wanted to see more of them yeah. together and i felt like there wasn't enough of it but that didn't matter because i'm sure there'll be some sequel so the next movie we watched was sleepless in seattle of course this is one that i watch every year Cause, cause she because has yeah, yeah I, because i love tom hanks and, of course, Meg Ryan, you know, if you watch You've Got Mail, you kind of have to see Sleepless in Seattle also. Yeah. Although I don't like it as much as You've Got Mail. And what's really funny is this time around when we were watching it, I, number one, was reminded about how much I really like the scenes when they're not together. So when Rosie is with Meg Ryan and they talk or when Tom Hanks is with his brother-in-law and sister, when they have that whole scene about they talk about an affair to remember and the dirty dozen and it just, it makes me laugh like every single time. That's probably my favorite parts of this movie, to be honest. That, that is one of the great strengths about this movie over You've Got Mail is that it gives both characters a chance to develop up without each other Mm -hmm. so that when you start seeing them grow together you can just see that it's in their souls to be together right exactly like how connected they were this movie was also one that we have on disc i could not find it streaming anywhere for you so unfortunately i think you have to like pay if you want to watch it but while we were watching this movie i got a whole bill pullman fix and decided we needed to then watch while you were sleeping which which is a great movie i love sandra bullock in this movie like she is the kind of girl you just want to be friends with in this movie (laughs) yeah um it, it's just so funny. It is showing on Disney Plus right now if you want to watch it. I cannot get over the family dynamic of this movie. Mm-hmm. It's just so great. Like the humor in it is really good. You feel for her. Mm-hmm. Her plight in needing a family. Now what else is really funny about this is um, I think it's the first year that I've watched this that I did not hate Peter Gallagher as much. And this is what I'm saying. So every other time I watch this, Peter Gallagher, like he... He got on my nerves. Okay, pretty boy, whatever. I don't like you. But now that I have watched The O.C. all the way through and have fallen in love with Peter Gallagher and his acting in The O.C., I now love Peter Gallagher, and he did not annoy me as much in this movie. So um, there is that. If you want to watch The O.C., it is currently on, I believe, HBO Max, so you can watch it there. I loved that show a lot more than I thought I would. I don't know if it's necessarily a Marshall show, but it's, no. it's a good show. Not, not really my show. Yeah. Um, so the next movie we watched is a new one this year. It's called Happiest Season, and it's on Hulu. And it is the story of a, a couple of girls who go home to her family, one of her family's home for Christmas, and they don't know she's a lesbian. They think that the girl, Kristen Stewart, is her roommate. So they stick her downstairs in the basement in a room that doesn't have a lock, they don't they don't give her privacy or anything and it's basically this whole story of the main character trying to keep her identity a secret Mm. and the girlfriend also trying to help her keep it a secret but at the same time just being woefully mistreated by Mm -hmm. the family um and also the sister the the other sister i think she's the older sister is in competition with the middle sister because they never felt like they were loved enough for who they were by their parents so they're always in competition of course they have issues too and of course there is a another guy who is a friend of Kristen stewart's and he comes onto the scene he's played by dan levy um if you watch schitt's creek oh my gosh in this role he's like her friend but he's obviously her gay friend and he's trying to tell her that this is hard and the experience of coming out is different from everybody and that because the two of both had different experiences that they should expect that she would have a different experience too 
his acting is amazing. I just cannot get over how much he is not just a comedic actor. But anyway, I loved this movie. If you've seen The Family Stone, you will love this movie as well. Okay. It is very similar vibes. It is funny, but it is also, there are points where I was just like, what are they doing to her? Like, I was so mad. And it might be the the first time that I felt sympathetic to a Kristen Stewart character. Just uh-huh. going to put that out there. Okay. Next, I watched the Dolly Parton movie Christmas in the Square on Netflix. And uh, to be perfectly honest, my husband couldn't get five minutes into it without saying, no, I don't want to watch this anymore. It's cheese. Um, it, there's a lot of cheese. But if you like musical cheese... You'll probably like watching this movie at least once. I did cry through half of it because it was very pretty. It was very pretty music. Okay. (laughs) But some of the lyrics were not as creative as they could be. Like, maybe, maybe you'll have my baby. You know? (laughs) It was like that kind of thing. And I was just like, all right. But it is really interesting. It is the story of a town who is being evicted by who they call the Wicked Witch of the Middle because they're in Kansas. And, <laughs> yeah. Because Dolly Parton doesn't do Canada. No, no. In fact, this was a very, reli- like, overly religious movie. Not in, like, a, a totally preachy way, but in a way that was just very Southern Southern spiritual, I guess is the best way I okay. can describe this. There was a lot of angels and praying and heaven. And it is a Christmas movie, so you kind of would expect it. But... There was just a lot of really good characters in it. It's only an hour and a half long, and I felt like it didn't have long enough to develop the actual plot of this because there are a lot of sub-storylines besides the town being evicted. But it was cute and definitely a one-time... I mean, I guess you really just go in for this for the music yeah. and Dolly Park. Yeah, pretty much. Then let's go into a couple more non-Christmas uh, movies, but some... Some good ones anyway, and I'm not going to talk very much about it. Crazy Rich Asians I just watched recently <laughs> um, because it's one of my favorites. I don't know why uh, I felt how, like watching ha, it. How many times has this been now? Um, I think it's been like six now. But I watched it before I go to bed. I like kind of broke it up over three nights. And I just, every time I see that wedding scene, I like sigh a little inside because of how beautiful it is. Yeah, they spent like what they what they say, like $40 million on the wedding. But it I just love that scene when the lights go down and it's like being in this like grasses with water and butterflies like i just cannot get over the beauty of what is happening in that building she's she's religious about this movie i love i love crazy she really loves it it's not my favorite movie ever but i love this movie and you know i agree it's a pretty movie i i can i can sit there in the same room as it i'm not offended by it and then i watched swiss family robinson on at disney plus because there's that one scene that made me think of christmas when they are you know seeing oh christmas tree and they're waiting for the boys to come back i it just made me feel like watching it last night so okay. i did random swiss family robinson that's exactly right um also what's really funny is that disney plus puts up a disclaimer about their yeah. portrayal of the culture of the pirates that they are trying to defend themselves against and the last movie i watched this week was ever after which is of course oh, a telling a long of a time cinderella since story seen that movie. yes yeah. it's on disney plus and i forgot how much i love 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 this movie, it's my favorite portrayal of Cinderella ever. It's really good. Even if it's not historically accurate, it's Who cares? Still it's a fairy tale. Great. I do not like Do Grey Scott in this. I'm just going to be upfront about that. But mm. all of the other casting, and honestly, Angelica Houston is a wicked stepmother that you actually feel for at times, is yeah. crazy to me. But I love it. And Melanie Linsky and Drew Barrymore are like two of my favorite actresses ever. So if you haven't seen Ever After, you should. Especially because for the music. All right, guys. I have been talking quite a while. It's time for Marshall to take over and tell you about the holidays that we can celebrate this week. All right. So we are talking about November 30th through December 6th. And right off of the bat, on November 30th, which is when this video is coming out, we are talking about Mason Jar Day. Oh, yeah. Mason jars. So mason jars were invented by John Landis Mason, patented in 1858, and it's used to preserve food. Um, and nowadays we use them for a lot of other crafts, like putting lights in them. What do you like to put in your mason jars? For like storage of things. There's a lot of things you can use mason jars for. There's so much. Uh, And they come with a lot of different kinds of uh, lids that you can screw on, including Mm -hmm. some that have straws and some that have, like, corks. Shakers, tops, yeah. yeah. So many different kinds of things. And 
Take the 30th, run on down to your local craft store, pick up a pack of, of mason jars and dangle them all over, all over your house with some fairy lights inside of them. <laughs> Marshall previously just used uh, mason jars and when we made cranberry sauce in our Instant Pot for oh, Thanksgiving. It was, so good, so, it was so, very tasty. I liked that. It was a little over cinnamony, but yes. And mm-hmm. speaking of mason jars, this was a fun one to try to find a pop culture reference for, but I did. And we're going to talk about Friends Season 3, Episode 3, called The One with the Jam, in which <laughs> Monica uh, has just broken up with Richard and... I needed a plan. Plan to get over my man. What's the opposite of man? Jam! (laughs) December 3rd is International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Now, the United Nations has actually been working with this for quite some time. 1981 was where this first started, and they actually had an international year of disabled persons which they later renamed and then they had a whole decade and now we just have a day every year but every time we have it there's a different theme and this year's theme is not all disabilities are visible and that's because out of the more than 1 billion people that are living with disabilities 450 million of them that's almost half are living with a mental or neurological condition so that means that not all of them actually display the disabilities they live with and those disabilities can be anywhere from changing how they are seeing the world to how they can express themselves into that world and so you should also take a little bit of time to take a look not only in the news and around you and see how you can better understand what you can do to help those people. That's what really interesting. I identify very much with this. It's one of the reasons why we chose this because not only am I hearing impaired, but I do have fibromyalgia, which is a little bit of a disability because of how it makes you feel and how you're able to do certain tasks. So because of that, we did want to highlight this, but I do have a pop culture reference called A Quiet Place. Now, Mm. if you don't know, if you've never seen A Quiet Place, you should know that this movie, there is hardly any talking in this movie whatsoever. It is mostly silent because of the nature of what they are experiencing in this movie. And one of the daughters of the couple is deaf, and so she wears hearing aids. And I thought that this was, was kind of a good example because not only it was it so important to depict that but also the way that this movie is done a hearing impaired person can watch it even with captioning and know exactly what's going on because of how it is filmed and portrayed in a similar vein i'd also like to bring up sky hunter by marie lou which was a book that i read last month Um, sky hunter the main character is actually mute which ends up being a help to her because the monsters that they face again they all hear so everyone on her team speaks in asl oh interesting yeah i thought that was a really good part of that december 5th is repeal day so you know a long long time ago uh, some people decided that they didn't like alcohol so much Uh, that they thought, you know, nobody should have no alcohol. And that was a bad day. (laughs) Um, We we, uh, then had a whole bunch of organized crime and a lot of traditions around making alcohol were lost. Some batches were lost entirely, so we can never recreate some of these drinks. And then, sometime after that, December 5th, 1933, everybody went, you know what? This is not working. How about we have alcohol again? (laughs) And they did. And it was good. (laughs) Um, I, I, I looked a lot. I did a lot of research on a pop culture reference for this holiday. There are many, not a lot though, that actually pertain to the repeal of prohibition. But many that have to do with uh, Prohibition. And a movie I have seen once, and it's been forever and a lifetime ago, is The Untouchables. So Mm -hmm. I decided to put that forth as my offering of repeal Prohibition topic. Yeah. As The Untouchables. Have you seen it? I have seen that. A long time ago. A long time ago, for sure. All right, let's talk about our lifestyle stuff. We have a couple favorites we're going to share with you, and then we're going to dive into November's Owl Crate. 
uh, and show you that. That's awesome. So, what is your uh, thing that you're really into right now, lifestyle-wise? Okay. So, last week, Lainey brought up this salted caramel hot chocolate from Wawa. And I had it. I had it with a shot of espresso in it, which basically makes it a salted caramel mocha. And... Yeah, I'll go with that. That that works. That that's some good stuff, right it there. It is really good if you have a Wawa near you. This is and we do. So for my lifestyle item, I want to put forth a YouTuber I just kind of discovered recently. Her name is Alexandra Rosalyn. She, I believe, is getting a master's in library science, but her she has a booktube. And I started watching a lot of her videos this week, and she's just so peppy and happy. So if you are looking for peppy, happy book reviews, definitely check her out. But the reason why I'm bringing her up is because earlier I referenced that I had some interesting revelations when it came to my reading style. And while I do really love chiclet and thrillers and, uh, you know, some contemporary novels, I have found that, that right now I'm gravitating a lot more towards young adult books. And maybe, just maybe, some middle grade as well, which I haven't read a lot of, but she does a lot of that on her channel, so I was interested in looking at some of the ones that she's recommending that's middle grade. So I might be doing that too, because I feel like just right now, you sometimes you just need fun and easy. And I feel like while middle grade can be tricky, uh, a little bit complex, it can also be fun and easy. So I'm going to dip my toe into middle grade reading okay. at some point, maybe in 2021. That'll be my goal to read a little more of that. Are we ready for the November Owl Crate? I think so. So the November Owl Crate is an interesting theme in my opinion. I feel like it is unexpected. If you look at the card we're going to be showing you, it does look fall, but it is very nature flower based. So I think I kind of felt like when I first saw the card for it, it was going to be very spring like, which seemed weird in November. But I think the more that I looked at this, the more I thought, oh, okay, well, it's fall based. I believe that the picture that they gave us is so gorgeous. This is just a, an amazingly beautiful picture. So it, it looks like some form of like autumn fairy princess i love that we are keeping these on our wall i feel like mm -hmm. it's a really pretty like representation of the art up there for sure so what is the first thing you're pulling out of there a number of uh flower plates these are these are pictures illustrations of flowers that are all over middle earth so you have the eleanor from Lorien, you have the Nefrendil from Doriath, the Atlas Kingsfoil from Numenor. It's interesting. I don't I don't know if we like it as much as we like the ones that we're putting up on the wall though. They are postcards, so they you can are send definitely them. postcards. And that if you look at it, they look like they're printed on some sort of canvas paper, but they're not. They're that's just like a texture that they printed on. And this is uh, created by Rhiannon Ormond. So next I've got these pip stickers from Pipsticks. And it's just a whole bunch of flowers and leaves and butterflies and bees, all natural stuff. But I see that it does still have autumn colors going on. Right, there. It's exactly. Not, it's not like bright pink and green. Yeah. These are definitely going to be used in something we're going to get to in the bottom of the of the box. This wooden majigger here is a flower pressing kit. It is a flower press. It's created by artist Peppermint Lines and is inspired by a darker shade of magic and features a fitting Antari blood magic command. As a Thera to grow. Interesting. But there's other things that you can do with this. Um, you can do all sorts of book binding. You can take pieces of paper and glue them together and turn them into wood using the same thing. Oh, interesting. Yep. I did that a whole bunch of times in my art classes. I actually used that and a sander to make a replica of a computer mouse. And so next I've got a necklace and it says on the box, you took the truth and you made it into flowers. And inside is a neck. Is this a necklace or is this it's a, a necklace? Yes. Yeah. And the pendant is a set of dandelion seeds that have been pressed inside of these glass globes. The quote is from Wild Beauty, and the whole thing is designed by Studio Kira. 
And I think it's really, like, interesting and fun as far as a necklace goes, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Oh, hey, Lainey, come on over take a look at this. <laughs> I think you might like some of this. It's a reading planner. It is by Blue Star Press, and it's a bookish reading planner for 2021. I have been waiting for us to do this review box just so that I can start filling this out because, yes, yes, I will use this. Then we've got the pin, which is a bear that is overgrown with flowers. This is going to be a part of the book that's in in there as well. There's a reason why it's a bear, but that pin is just so cute. Yeah, it's kind of nice. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the book. Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. So there is, this is a signed edition, and there's an exclusive cover, and there's sprayed, you know, those edges are like this purpley red sprayed edges. There's also a stunning reverse dust jacket artwork. So I guess if you turn it inside out, oh yeah. Ooh. That's Very pretty fun. Pretty. And there's also a letter from the author inside, like we normally have. Ceres is safe in the kingdom of Eloria. Here, there are no droughts, disease, or famine, and peace is everlasting. It has been this way for hundreds of years, since the first king made a bargain with the lady who ruled the forests that borders the kingdom. But as Eloria prospered, the woods grew dark, cursed, and forbidden. Ceres knows this all too well. When she was young, she barely escaped as the woods killed her friends and her mother. Now Ceres carries a small bit of the curse, the magic, in her blood, a reminder of the day she lost everything. As a new queen is crowned, however, things long hidden in the woods descend on the kingdom itself. Ceres is forced to run, her only companions a small and irritating fox from the royal garden, and the magic in her veins. It's up to her to find the legendary Lady of the Wilds and beg for a way to save her home. But the road is darker and more dangerous than she knows. And as secrets from the past are uncovered amid the teeth and roots of the forest, it's going to take everything she has just to survive. What are your thoughts about that book? It kind of gives me a vibe of uh, Red Riding Hood. A little bit, yeah. Hmm. Some other things that you get in the book. Uh, There's a card that is talking about a sneak peek of a book called Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert that's coming in January. It's a gorgeously illustrated collection of 12 original fairy tales. That's interesting. I will definitely check that out. Inside the little book that they give you also, they have some fun things I thought would be interesting. So in here they have your birth month flower guide. Marshall, your birth flower is a honeysuckle, which means you're devoted. And mine is a marigold, which means I'm passionate, applicable. And as always, they do give you a music playlist from Spotify that you can use while you're reading, just kind of give you atmosphere. This one is called The Dark Heart of Mirkwood. So it's very like Lord of the Rings themed, which I think is fun. I love getting these playlists. It gives me like some music to work to and whatnot. And then the sneak peek for next month is Love is a Battlefield. It kind of reminds me a lot of Gothic Medieval at the same time. It's really interesting. And it says every December box will include an item from Fiction Bath Company. So that's fun also. And that is the November Owl Crate. If you want to see a combined picture of everything we have, it will be on my Instagram as well. Um, But that is basically everything for November. So did you guys have fun? If you are one of those kinds of people that likes to get in and start typing away at the computer screen and say what you think, could you tell us what you think of this little format here of just straight audio rather than seeing our two mugs up on the screen? We'd like to know what you think. Comment down below. And don't forget, you want to like and subscribe and ring the notification button. Otherwise, you will never know when we say things to the people. That's true. So until next time. We're sending you fun, hope, love, and peace. But y'all stay zany.